The pallid sturgeon is a prehistoric looking, large, bottom dwelling fish of the sturgeon family. It has a heavy elongated body with a gray back fading to white or pale cream on the belly. Its head is very long and flattened, even more so than other sturgeon, especially when the fish is young. Also like other sturgeon, the body is armored with five rows of tough bony plates or scoots. This fish lacks any true teeth and instead uses its vacuum-like mouth fringed by barbels for probing muddy riverbeds. During the spawning season, adult males may develop fine tubercles or bony bumps along the head and body. This species can grow very large, making it up to about 6 feet in length, or 180 to 200 centimeters. It can have a full-grown weight of about 250 pounds, though such giants are exceedingly rare and most individuals are much smaller. Pallid sturgeon are a long-lived fish, often living for 50 to 80 years. In low numbers, pallid sturgeon inhabit major river channels of the Missouri and lower Mississippi River systems, from Montana and the Dakotas downstream to Louisiana. They favor deep, turbid waters over firm sand and gravel. Historically, they ranged throughout the entire Colorado River Basin and adjacent Mississippi tributaries, but overfishing, dams, and habitat changes have severely affected their range. These fish are migratory, swimming long distances to spawn. Upon spawning, they release adhesive eggs in fast riffles, and the newly hatched larvae drift downstream with the current. Juveniles settle in slower backwaters and feed and grow there. Young fish eat invertebrates and eventually small fish, while adults scavenge or vacuum up a variety of prey from the bottom. The pallid sturgeon's history is one of decline. It was once common and culturally important to Native Americans and the early settlers, who used them as a prized food fish. By the mid-20th century, the fish had become very rare and was listed as endangered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in 1967. It is now currently listed on the list of critically endangered fish. This decline in wild populations has mainly been due to dam construction, which blocks their specialized spawning migrations. Intense recovery efforts are underway, including captive breeding and river restoration, though at present only a few thousand individuals are thought to remain in fragmented populations. The Blackside Dace is a petite, brightly colored minnow found only in headwater streams of the Cumberland Plateau. Adults only reach about 2 to 3 inches or 50 to 70 millimeters. They have a relatively large eye, a blunt snout, and a slightly upturned or subterminal mouth. The fish's coloration is quite distinctive. The body is a gold to olive on top with a silvery lower half and a bold black stripe running horizontally along each flank towards the tail. Adult breeding males become incredibly vivid with orange, red, and yellow, the fins bursting with color. Blackside dace inhabit clear, small forest streams with well-vegetated banks, pools, and riffles. They prefer undercut banks and submerged cover and are intolerant of silty waters. In April through June, they spawn by scattering eggs in the gravel, males often forming small groups and competing for females. These fish quickly mature, usually by one year, and live only about three to four years. The Blackside Dace has a very restricted range being found in southeastern Kentucky and adjacent Tennessee, with an introduced population in southwestern Virginia. Historically, it was only known to be in a few tributaries of the Cumberland River drainage in Kentucky and Tennessee. But in the late 20th century, a few dace were discovered in a tributary of the Clinch River in Virginia. Because of its limited distribution and sensitivity to habitat disturbance, the Blackside Dace is federally listed as threatened, being very vulnerable to man-made influences. The Red River Pupfish is a tiny, stubby, stout-bodied fish, seldom over 2 inches or 60 millimeters. It has a short, upturned mouth and a fused dorsal fin, with the anal fin far back on the body. Non-breeding males and females have pale silvery bodies with dark mottled blotches. Breeding males, however, become more colored with iridescent blue, green, and yellow hues. These pupfish also have tiny tricuspid or three-pointed teeth, which I think is pretty neat in a fish this small. The species is found primarily in southwestern Oklahoma and north-central Texas. Its native range is somewhat limited, only being found in the Red and Brazos rivers. However, it has since been introduced to a few nearby drainages where it now persists. Red River pupfish favor warm, shallow pools and runs in sandy or silty streams. They are remarkably tolerant of heat and salinity, often found in very hot, shallow water, up to 98 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius, 
a temperature that would kill most other fish. Red River pupfish feed mainly on midge larvae and other tiny insects and invertebrates. They have a fast life cycle for a fish, breeding can occur whenever conditions allow, and eggs hatch in about four to seven days. Adults mature in a few months and may live one to two years. Because of its relatively small native range, the Red River pupfish is monitored, but current assessments list it as a species of least concern. The Colorado pike minnow is a huge torpedo-shaped ciprinid, once the apex fish of the Colorado River system. It has a long, streamlined body with a broad, cone-shaped head and a large terminal mouth that has no jaw teeth, but instead large hooked teeth in its throat. Its coloration is olive green on the back, grading to golden sides and a white belly. Females are paler and larger bodied. Historically, the Colorado pike minnow was enormous. Unverified reports claim that it was up to 6 feet or almost 2 meters. Though in modern times, the fish only reached 20 to 40 inches, or a half a meter to a meter. But in any case, it is North America's largest minnow. The species was once found throughout the entire Colorado River Basin of Arizona, Utah, Nevada, New Mexico, Wyoming, Colorado, and even into Mexico. It occupied main river channels and used flooded margins for spawning. Spawning migrations began in late spring, and adults would move hundreds of miles upstream into these spawning areas. Since the late 1800s, construction of dams and diversions have extirpated pike minnows from most of their range. Today they survive only in fragmented populations of the upper basin, with occasional reintroductions in the lower basin. The Mexican populations are now fully extirpated. The pike minnow is federally listed as endangered, and is a very rare fish in its existing range. It is now the subject of many conservation projects in the Colorado River system. A close cousin of the Colorado pike minnow is the northern pike minnow, which has a much different story. In fact, rather than being the center of a conservation effort, this pike minnow carries a literal bounty on its head with the states of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho offering a reward incentivized program to reduce the number of these pike minnow in the rivers of the Pacific Northwest. What I find so interesting about this fish is that despite being a native fish, it is treated like an invasive nuisance in its own native range. The reason being that it preys on higher valued trout and salmon species, both native and non-native. Adding to the drama, a big reason that northern pike minnow are more abundant than they once were is because of man-made dams on the Columbia and Snake Rivers, which in contrast to the Colorado pike minnow, have created ideal slower water habitats that suit their predatory lifestyle, giving them a big predatory advantage over fish like juvenile salmon and steelhead, and thus leading to population booms. As far as size and appearance, it is somewhat similar to the Colorado pike minnow in color and pattern, but on average it is much smaller, usually around 24 to 35 inches or 60 to 90 centimeters. It has a broad range in the Pacific Northwest extending along the Pacific coast into Canada. Currently, northern pike minnow populations are very numerous, and the fish is classified as a fish of least concern, even considered pests by many. The central stone roller is a stout minnow with a blunt, slightly overhanging snout, and a horizontally oriented subterminal mouth specialized for scraping. Uniquely, its lower jaw is cartilaginous and chisel-like, which it uses to graze algae off of stones. It gets its name from its behavior of overturning stones in search of algae and other food. Breeding males have large tubercles or spiky structures on their head and sides. Having tubercles on the head and fins isn't all that uncommon, but I'm not aware of many fish that have breeding tubercles across their whole bodies like these fish do. Adults are olive brown on the back with a brassy sheen fading to silvery white underneath. This fish is about 7 to 8 inches, or 17 to 22 centimeters at full grown length. During the spawn, males build and guard shallow gravel nests, often in cooperation with other males. After spawning, the female's eggs adhere to the gravel and hatch in just a few days. Central stone rollers occur widely across eastern and central North America, from New York and Ontario west through the Great Lakes region, to the Plain States, and south through the Mississippi Basin down to the Rio Grande, and even into Mexico. They prefer clear, moderately cool small streams and rivers with gravel or rubble bottoms and moderate current. 
Currently, the species is abundant and listed as a species of least concern. The northern studfish is a large killifish reaching about 7 to 8 inches, or 18 to 20 centimeters in full potential length. It has a long slender body with a sharply upturned mouth. Non-breeding adults are silvery to brownish along the sides with fine horizontal stripes. In spring, breeding males become spectacularly colored. The flanks turn bright iridescent blue with horizontal red-orange stripes and orange-red spots along the head and the fins. Like other top minnows, the dorsal fin is set well on the back of the body, and the fins have no spines. This species is known to leap vigorously out of the water when disturbed by predators. Their diet is mainly aquatic insect larvae and snails. The northern studfish occurs throughout streams of the interior south and midwest, inhabiting clear, rocky, moderate flow streams of the Ohio, Cumberland, Tennessee, and lower Mississippi drainages, as well as the Gulf Slope systems. The northern studfish is currently considered a species of least concern. If you haven't seen the other episodes in this series, I invite you to watch those as well. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I hope to see you on the next one.